if you watch my channel, I've already gone on record to say that college track and field is so competitive, it basically might as well be professional level. Some of the greatest athletes in the world run for college teams. And we know this because Abby Steiner, Grant Holloway, and Britton Wilson all became world champions immediately after finishing a college season. However, I want to be very clear that this video is not clickbait. College track and field is legitimately in trouble and nobody seems to be paying attention because NIL is here and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And most people assumed that college athletes were gonna get paid. Well, that was a lie because before we ever opened Pandora's box, I already knew it wasn't gonna end well for the track athletes. Consider that Bronny James and Arch Manning are both freshmen and their projected NIL value is worth more than $2.5 million. Their teams are actually in season right now, but they haven't played even one minute between both of them. And they also have last names that are incredibly familiar. I try to listen to you when you comment on my videos and somebody asked me to discuss what track and field athletes should do about NIL. Well, here is my advice and I don't know how to say it without it coming out harsh. So I'ma just come out and say, grab a really good umbrella because the sky is falling and nobody's coming to save you. And if you don't believe me, it's like they said in the wire, just follow the money because NIL is all about paying college athletes, but you can't pay people with money that doesn't exist. And if anything that I say actually connect with you, it is always greatly appreciated if you would like and subscribe. But if I don't, just let me know in the comment section because I try to read them all. First things first, NIL was invented to solve a problem that the NCAA has faced for decades. The National Collegiate Athletic Association is a nonprofit organization that wants to provide a world-class athletics and academic experience for student athletes that fosters lifelong well-being. You don't have to believe me, but in general, they have done this as a nonprofit incredibly well, but with two major exceptions to this rule. One is Division I FBS football, but I don't even mean everybody particularly what we used to call the Power Five. But thanks to conference realignment, the Pac-12 is dead and Stanford is now joining the ACC. That means the only conferences that make any real money are the Big Ten, the Big 12, the ACC, and of course, the SEC. Believe it or not, there are no NCAA schools that won't be a member of one of the conferences I just mentioned that turned a profit on athletics in the past season. But the other exception is Division I men's basketball. And once again, I'm not talking about everybody. It's the NCAA tournament that actually matters, particularly for programs that come there often and win a whole bunch of games once they do. Outside of this, college sports are barely making a profit. So where does that put track and field? Well, if we're gonna keep being honest, all that revenue that the NCAA makes from basketball and football gets reinvested back into the other sports. And that includes track and field for the colleges that do make real money from football and basketball. But remember, it's primarily football. They also use that money to fund other sports. But football and basketball are the revenue generating sports. The same ones who get all of the NIL money. But remember, it's still mostly football. I bring all of this up because the NIL conversation is getting out of hand and I'll prove it to you. There is now talk of introducing revenue sharing for major college football. That's basically paying the players like they are in the pros. Remember, these are the same teams that already have 85 full ride scholarships to give out to their football players. For men's track and field, you only get 12.6. But if you pay those players out from the revenue, beyond the scholarships, there would be no money left. I don't know how to say this part without it coming out harsh. So I'ma just come out and say it. It was always understood 
in this system than the other sports that don't have as much scholarship dollars, athletically, have to pull their weight academically, including footballs. Because on any campus, what team do you think has the lowest GPA? And the track team is almost always one of the highest. Right now, any profit that football is making is basically being used to pay for the rest of the athletic department to continue to function. And track and field doesn't make any revenue money at most schools. So how do you think those coaches' salaries are getting paid? Only a few track teams in the nation can even get close to breaking even. And that's just because they hold a bunch of meets and charge everyone else's team to show up. The truth is that the more we focus on paying the athletes, the less money there will be for some of the athletes, the track athletes, to even have a team to compete for at all. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't some track and field athletes making money from NIL? Well, sort of, kind of. It depends on how you look at it. Some track and field athletes do have legitimate NIL deals, but it's not for the same reasons that the quarterback for USC football has one for men's track and field. I tried to look up NIL deals for those athletes, and Google had nothing for me. But that's because men's track doesn't get any television coverage, and it doesn't make any money for the college. So simply being the fastest in the nation still doesn't give anybody a great reason to invest in you. And for the most part, none of the top men's athletes have large social media followings, so they ain't getting much of a deal. But on the women's side, the one.com actually keeps rankings of projected NIL values amongst the top six women rated from track and field. Not one of them has ever been an All-American. In fact, only one of them has ever even competed at the NCAA championships. Caitlin Tui is the only national champion at all on the list, and she is ranked number eight. What all those women ahead of her in the top six have in common is they have twice her social media following. No shade, but that can't be 100% about their performance on the track. So NIL money in track and field apparently doesn't have much to do with how good you actually are in the sport, even if you are the best. So it should be easy to see why there's almost no money available for the rest of the athletes who lose to them. So if you are a college track and field athlete or hoping to become one, please know that I am on your side. You work incredibly hard competing against some of the best in the world and you don't get anywhere near enough credit for it. And I know you want to be compensated for all of that work and NIL appears to be a way to do it. But whenever the NCAA changes the rule, it's almost always done with somebody in mind. So if you are the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns football team, then NIL is here to pay you out. But if you are the best 100 meter sprinter for the Longhorns track team, then that rule really had nothing to do with you. If you feel the need to go out and look for NIL deals, it's probably because you're looking for something that doesn't really exist. If it did, they would have likely called you already. And if this thing gets any more out of hand, the money that actually paid for your team could be threatened really soon. Assuming that you still have a team to run on and you really want to make money from NIL, there's only one thing that I have figured out that works. I just hope you're really good at TikTok dances to pull it off. I'm Coach Rob, and I'm always here to help you get recruited for college track and field. And if you want to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe.